Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over week 15 of Survivor Pool. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, uh, I mean, thank you so much for all the comments uh, and, and the private messages and things like that. I really didn't expect to get this much, uh, I want to say traction in the wrong way. I mean, uh, this many this many viewers that, that, that actually learn from this and are doing really well as a result of it. I mean, I thank you for all of your, your private messages and things like that. I, I, can, I can share some of them with you, I guess, but several of you are, are tell me that you're really deep in a survivor pool where you haven't ever really gotten this far before and are in a position to win some really good money. And uh, that's really important to me. Um, obviously it's more important than you understand the process, but um, it, it's certainly great to hear the results are, are, are coming in for you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this week and with an eye towards finishing this off. Um, last week, no blood, no, you know, very few, if any, uh, underdogs came in. And fortunately or unfortunately, we're coming to the realization that most pools with single picks are going to be chopped. Um, the, the underdogs in Survivor Pool this year have run just so poorly that you know, the, the expected amount of teams that, that, you know, didn't survive or get knocked out is running way below expectation this season. So that's, that's why there's just so many people left in pools that it's just very likely that most of them chop multiple ways. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it beats losing, but it's always great to try to get the whole thing. Um, now there are pools with double picks that, that are still at issue. Um, and I'm in a couple of those. Um, where you could get still get some molt, you know, some big big knockouts and you know chop uh, chop the uh, amount of entries way down. Um, but in any case, let, let's go through the uh, week fifteen the way we always do, and you know let's see where we're at. So we're gonna again we're ranking these teams by EV, but reminding ourselves again what's important. We want teams with a combination of good in, uh, implied immediate expected value, which is a combination of, of good winning chances as a function of their popularity. So you have two teams with equal winning chances, but one more owned than the other. You're obviously gonna to wanna to take the one with lower ownership because you get more leverage that way. And secondarily, or secondly, I shouldn't say secondarily, because it could be primarily, you wanna pick teams that fit your overall path to victory towards the end of the season. And we talk about that all year long, this balance between future value planning and, you know, surviving. And for those of you that have been following these, these, this process, you see what's, what's this has gotten you. It's gotten you the ability to have decent options late in the season where kind of beginners at Survivor Pool, what they do is they just take the team that's most likely to survive each week. And after eight weeks, they run out of teams. And they're like, oh, what, what the hell happened? Are you just... Can't believe I lost for this three-point favorite. And that's just the way life works, man. You got to play to win, not to just win each individual week. So good on you for, for, for sticking with us because now, you know, we've been planning these things throughout the course of the whole season. And, we, yeah, we took a little bit of risk to get there, but now we can start cashing in on this stuff. So we're ranking these teams by EV. And as you'll see, the, the top EV play this week also happens to be the top win percent chance uh, team. And the reason for that is not that many people have them available. Um, you know, only, I guess, 23%, 25% have them available. And I presume all those guys are taking the Rams anyway. So honestly, you know, while I've been, you know, sometimes advising you to, you know, to fade chalk, remember chalk was a function of EV and popularity. I wouldn't, I would only tell you to fade the highest winning percent chance if I thought they were going to be too highly owned. But here, you know, given the fact, given their winning percent chance and given their popularity, you'll see they're ranked as the top of the EV. So if you got the Rams available, just drop the bomb on people and just, just move on. Uh, now, I shouldn't say move on, because remember, just because a team is 90% to win doesn't mean they're going to win. Uh, that's the way probabilities work and certainly possible that they lose. But from an EV perspective, you got the Rams left, just drop them on people. Now, if you don't have the Rams, then it gets kind of interesting. So, like, for example, I've been... In some of my pools, I actually have Pittsburgh still available, and not that many people have them. And so if, if you know, for example, that in your pool that you're in, let's just say that you have the Rams and Pitt available, which is really difficult to do. 
and you know that say 20 people have the Rams left and all of them, they're going to take the Rams, then you certainly want to take Pittsburgh. I mean, obviously. Okay. So like for you, the EV of Pitt would be higher than this, what this grid is showing. Um, and some pools now, I mean, I don't even have the Rams. So thank God I do have Pitt. The interesting decision here is let's say you have Pitt and Baltimore available. Okay. Or let's say you have Baltimore available in general. This is where the decisions become really interesting. So if you have Pitt and Baltimore available, for example, it is not even remotely close who you should take. You should take Pitt. Why? Because if you go ahead to week 16, you're going to really want Baltimore. Okay. And this is why. Obviously, if you have KC left somehow, you're going to, you don't worry about it. You just can take that. But if you've got Baltimore available, the reason why you're going to want them is this. Not that many people have them left. And the people that have them left, a lot of them are going to burn them this week. So they'll be very scarce in 16. And Houston and Cleveland are going to be the two most popular teams in 16 by a lot. And they are going to take an insane amount of ownership. So what you want to do in Survivor is take situations like that and try to get leverage in those situations. So if you can get Baltimore in 16, with equal winning chance to two incredibly popular teams, that is honestly what survivor pool theory is all about. So you should try your best to hold Baltimore and play them in 16 fading Houston and Cleveland. That is basically the nut play when it comes to survivor pool. So yeah, great. Sounds terrific. But what do you do? Like, yeah, if we're between Pittsburgh and Baltimore, sure. Take Baltimore. But, what if you're between Baltimore and say Tennessee, all right? If you drop to Tennessee, you're giving up some EV this week, right? And is it worth you dropping down EV for the purposes of grabbing Baltimore? I think it definitely is, okay? I think that if you have both Baltimore and Tennessee available, I think you're supposed to take Tennessee, okay? with the idea of taking Baltimore in 16. What if you don't have Tennessee available? I presume none of you have Green Bay, but if you do, then same thing goes for Green Bay. If you have Baltimore and Green Bay available, I would take Green Bay. Now, what if though you have to consider Baltimore as opposed to, we're gonna rank these again, say Indianapolis or Buffalo, for example. Ouch, okay? I don't think it's actually close with these because, well, with Indianapolis, it's not close because you can't take Indianapolis for the sake of saving Baltimore because if you have Indianapolis available, then you want them in 17 as literally the top option on the slate. That is basically the nut play. If you can have Indianapolis for 17, uh, you're probably going to win, okay? And you're going to probably just knock some people out in the process when you see what people have left in 17. Okay. Um, however, what about Buffalo? Let's say you have Baltimore and Buffalo available. Is it worth dropping all the way to EV to Buffalo in the name of saving Baltimore for 16? And unfortunately, I don't know exactly the answer. I think it's close. Um, and you're going to have to deal with your risk tolerance. Like for me, I'm in one pool where I have this exact decision to make, but for me, it's different because I have doubles in 15 and 16. Okay. And 17. So if, for example, for me, if I took Pittsburgh and Baltimore this week and didn't go down to Buffalo, like in that particular pool, not only would I have no Baltimore, I don't even have Houston or Cleveland or KC I don't have any of this. So I'm going to have to drop all the way to the dregs of society here to like Vegas or Washington or something like that. And it's hard enough if I have to drop from, you know, to pick one pick of those, but to have to pick two kind of pick them teams, that's rough business. So for me, um, I'm probably going to eat that EV this week and maybe drop to Buffalo in the name of saving uh, Baltimore for week 16. It's definitely a risky and difficult decision, I, I will tell you. So I, hopefully you guys all have the Rams and don't have to make that call. 
Um, but if you don't have the Rams, then this decision on whether to play Baltimore or to drop is very, very difficult. So where am I at? If you got the Rams, single picks, drop them down. If you don't have the Rams, you have Pittsburgh, drop them down for sure. If you don't have either of those two and you do have Baltimore, you're going to have to make a decision of whether to play them now or save them for 16. Now, let's say you have, say, KC available at 16. Yeah, I mean, you definitely are going to want to, you know, then you could drop Baltimore now. Enjoy. But if you don't, I would rather you eat some EV this week than have to go for, say, Houston or Cleveland as chalk in 16. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, I'm pretty aggressive when it comes to this kind of thing. So that's, that's just where I'm at. Um, so that's the intriguing decision. Now let's say, again, let's say, Eric, I didn't listen to you. I got nothing available. I, I have no Rams. I have no Pitt. I have no Baltimore. Then what do I do? Well, then you just, I would honestly rank these in order. Just take Tennessee. If you have them, take Green Bay. If you have them, if you don't have any of those yikes, the one thing you want to avoid is taking Indianapolis. Like, let's just say you have Indianapolis and say one of these, like Arizona, Tampa, something like that, them available. I would really risk I – would, I would not take Indianapolis this week under any circumstances for the reasons we discussed. We want them in 17 pretty much at all costs. So, you know, this is as much as I've gotten into, you know, the different game theory aspects involved in this, you know, um, and hopefully this wasn't too confusing for you. And unfortunately, no, I cannot give individual advice, especially on the YouTube channel. I just can't be responsible for checking back and forth. And if I respond to one person, I have to respond to all of them, but hopefully this is enough to get you by. So let me again, try to summarize this week. Um, if you have the Rams, I would play them. Uh, I just would. If you have uh, Pitt, you know, they're secondly, definitely second best option, maybe even a top option. Even if you have the Rams and Pitt available, you know, if you're in a pool with 20 people and you know 19 of them have the Rams and none have Pittsburgh, and you know they're all going to drop the Rams on it, then, then I would definitely take Pittsburgh. I mean, 100%. Um, uh, if you don't have Pitt, then you have this decision between Baltimore and this other stuff which is tough. It really is a tough call. Uh, I would, I would save Baltimore if I had nothing else available in 16, like KC uh, aside from, I would not play Houston and Cleveland in 16. So for me, I would save Baltimore and not play them unless you had to go all the way down to say, you know, here, you know, um, I play Baltimore over Indianapolis. I would play Baltimore over, you know, Tampa, but the Baltimore versus Buffalo call is really a tough one. That's the toughest decision on the slate, if you want to know the truth. Hopefully, you guys don't have to make that call. If you do, best of luck, and let me know what you decide. Um, otherwise, that's it. Good luck, and uh, let's, uh, let's not screw it up. Let's bring this home.